This tutorial will focus on how to generate synthetic data using DeepTrack 2.0. Hello, I'm Jesus and I'll be your guide for this tutorial. In this example, we use experimental data to train a generated adversarial neural network to create new data from a semantic representation of the image. We will use the SSTeam database, which contains images of neural tissues. The segmentation contains spatial information about the cell structures, including the membrane, the mitochondria, and extracellular spaces. Our network will learn the mapping relation between the input mask and its corresponding cell image. First, we need to import the required packages, download the database, and define the paths to training and validation data. If we have a look at the database, we will see that the files are numbered by integers. Hence, we need to compute the number of images we have for both training and validation and iterate over those integers by defining a cyclic iterator that we will use for reading the images. Also, note that the base path might vary depending on whether we are validating or training the network. To control all of this, we define a dummy feature that contains the logic that switches between the validation set and the training set and stores the index file. This feature literally does nothing. It is only used as a container for properties. To read the images, we use the load image feature. The input to this function is the path to the image to load. We want to read all the images the row cell images, the membrane images, and the mitochondria images with exactly the same index. To do so, load image inherits the properties of root, which contains the base path as well as the index file. One trick that is particularly useful in practice, especially when working with GANs, is normalizing the input as well as the output images between minus 1 and 1. We normalize the cell images using the normalize mean max feature. For the mask, we combine the membranes and mitochondria images into a single segmentation. Then we normalize the results between minus 1 and 1. We add a random Gaussian noise with a standard deviation ranging between 0 and 0 0.1. We noticed that adding noise improved the quality of the generated images significantly. The value for the standard deviation is completely up to you and depends on your application. Then, we combine the normalized cell images and the noisy max into a single database and apply some augmentation to the images, including left-right flipping and a thin transformation that involve random rotations, load moderate shading, and a scaling in both X and Y directions. Note that the missing pixels in the transformed images are filled in by mirror reflections of the images. Finally, we conditionally skip the augmentation step if we are currently resolving validation images by using conditional features. If we are training the network, we use the augmented database. Otherwise, we use the combined database. Next, we define these two functions to retrieve the images and labels from the dataset. Let's visualize some image examples and their corresponding labels. Here, we show images and targets side by side. Our network 
is composed of a generator that learns the mapping relation between the input mask and its corresponding cell image, and of a discriminator that determines whether the generated image looks realistic or not according to the experimental data. In this example, the generator follows a unit design. For this function, we define the number of convolutions in each convolutional layer during down and up sampling. Also, we define the number of filters at the base of the unit, where the image is the most down sampled, as well as at the end of the decoder path. We use the tangential hyperbolic activation function at the last layer of the network. For the encoder, we use convolutional layers with leaky real activations and instance normalizations. We also use convolutional blocks for the decoder. At the base of the unit, we use ResNet blocks. For downsampling, we use convolutional layers with a stripe of 2. For deconvolution, we use the static upsample block, which performs a bilineal interpolation followed by a convolutional layer for upsampling. Finally, we use convolution blocks for the final layers. The discriminator is a convolutional model. As previously, we defined the number of filters in each convolutional layer of the downsampling path. For this model, we also use convolution blocks with a stride of 2 for downsampling. Note that then stop is set to false. We do not want to have fully connected dense layers at the end of the network. Instead, we designed the discriminator to divide the input images into overlapping patches and classify each patch as real or fake rather than using a single number to describe the image. Next, we create the GAN from these two networks. The generator and the discriminator. Also, we define the loss functions as well as the optimizers for both the discriminator and the assembled model. Now it's time for training. Here, we use a continuous generator to continuously generate images during training. Training this network would take hours. Hence, now we will download pre-trained weights for visualizing the results. Here we have seven results. These are the input noisy masks, the prediction of the neural network, and the ground truths. Note that the generated images are qualitatively similar to the images from the experimental dataset. 